Hello everybody and welcome back. In this video we'll be taking a look at my experiences unboxing, building and setting up the TiVo Tarantula 3D printer uh, in its new form with the TiVo Titan extruder package. I think it's a pretty cool printer but I did have some issues setting it up and getting it built and installing a firmware and yeah I must warn you this could be a bit of a lengthy video um, but I ran into a couple of issues and I want to report them so people going out and buying this printer they should know what they're up against. Uh, I have to say I think it's a very very capable printer but the road to getting it working is kind of a long and winding one and it's rocky in places too. So enjoy the video and let's see how it works out. For those of you who have been following my channel over the past few weeks and months, uh, you will have noticed that I spent quite a lot of time designing this 3D printer um, and uh, going into detail about doing some of the design decisions one way or the other. Uh, for example, the upside down structure of the Z axis with only one lead screw or the use of linear rails and sliders and placing the drive belts outside of the linear rail um, to get a, a vibration free movement. All of these things were kind of an evolutionary step one after the other. But for some reason somebody else seems to have done exactly the same thing. And there is a 3D printer out there which is very similar in design to the one that I've created. Gearbest has agreed to send me a review unit for one of these printers. And that printer is the updated TiVo Tarantula. And it is very very similar to this one. The upside down Z axis with the stepper at the top the linear rails with the belt mounted above and below it so you have less vibration. A uh, center mounted uh, build plate and many other small things that make these two printers look very similar although the other printer is a bit smaller. So what I'm now waiting for is the TiVo Tarantula to arrive, which may take some time. But looking forward to it, this may be a really cool review because I can compare the qualities of the two printers. One that I built myself and the other which is available at a pretty decent price and which apparently is now updated and has pretty good reviews. So I'm looking forward to it and I hope when the time comes I will have fun doing the review. It finally arrived. I really hope it was worth waiting for. It took some time but let's have a look inside. First of all it's a very nice box that everything's in and if we open it first thing we see is the thing that I personally love the most. It's a printed manual. A printed manual for assembly and I hope some steps beyond that. Isn't that nice? Real carton, thick paper that's what a manual is supposed to look like, not something on an SD card. That is something that you can put away, find again and immediately use. 
Also, there is a Merry Christmas card. Yeah, didn't make it. There is a TiVo Products YouTube video instructions card oh, with some links. Nice. A thanks for your order card, which is a re replacement parts list. Also very useful. And an after sales card. Let's see what it says. Service information, replacement parts, carrier loss and defective parts. Neat. Very good. Let's continue on down. What have we got here? We have filament. We have lots of filament. 0 0.2 kilograms of PLA fil filament multicolor. Another 0 0.2 kilograms of white filament PLA. Wow, uh, that is a lot of filament. That is the most filament that I've ever gotten together with a printer. Really good. Um, an acrylic part, five millimeters I would say. Cables, power cable, 12 volt power cable, more connecting power cable, some end switches. Yep, limit switches, four of them. Four limit switches. Cool. Stepper cables. What is under here? Here we have a USB data cable, some PTFE tube, a heated built platform, what? Oh, it's got insulation on it. Well, that's smart. Oh, I like that. I well, I really like that. I also like the 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 way this was soldered. This is very clean. Wow, and it's solid. It's it's aluminium. That is a real solid piece of aluminium. Wow, that is cool. That is really good. Okay, let's put all of this back in here and continue on down. What have we got here? We have a power supply A chunky power supply with a voltage selector. Make sure to pick the right voltage before you turn this on. 12 volts, 25 amps. Wow. Looks good. But it does have open connectors, although it does have a plastic cover. So let's see if we can make this safe. What else do we have? We have acrylic parts. Um, cable wrap or, or cable pipe. We have rollers. We have, oh, we have the TiVo Titan extruder for the Tarantula. Now, for those of you who didn't know, this is the updated version. The original version came with a very simple extruder, a very simple extruder driver, and this is an updated version, and this is 
a very nice piece because it actually has a reduction gear for the stepper to the filament so the pressure on the filament is a lot a lot more than what you get from the stepper because it has a reduction gear and I believe it is a one to three reduction gear that is really really good oh I love that so we have more acrylic parts we have the belts we have some coupling elements we have uh, the nut for the z-axis lead screw and more rollers and some really chunky springs oh, they're probably for the table for the build platform neat and everything is in its own bag it's very well packaged and here we have tools a small screwdriver a small wrench some hex wrenches yeah we have the TiVo extruder that's a pretty standard J type with a chunky cold block it's the hot end cold end a very short throat I like that because they usually have pretty good heat transfer um, the cold block is pressed onto the aluminium with two very small hex screws that looks that looks good a fan for the extruder um, 90 degree um, separators and more aluminium parts for the aluminium profiles. Oh, where are the aluminium profiles? Oh, this is three layers. So let's continue. There's something here. More rollers and a driver gear for the belt. And the steppers doesn't actually say a lot about them NEMA 17 I would think 1.8 degrees per step and all the way down at the bottom we've got the aluminium profiles we have a display board which is a four lines by 40 board that's the wrap wrap discount what d1 scount <laughs> Uh, smart controller board those are pretty good I like these um, they've got an encoder and that one feels promising well let's see now what have we more more acrylics display cable more rollers what have we got here another fan some distancers screws nuts and bolts and a controller board So 
So that's an 80 Mega on here, like on the Arduino Mega. Some pretty standard stepper controllers, connectors. Well, it's a pretty simple little board, but that should suffice. There are no coolers on here, no heat sinks whatsoever. Let's see if that is good, but it doesn't look bad. Yeah. It appears that the the parts for the electronics are clear acrylic, while the other parts are black acrylic. Now, here we've got 20 by 40 aluminium profiles. And they are pretty clean. Well, they've actually been cleaned after they've, they were cut and there's almost no shavings in there. Very nice. Very good quality for the parts. Uh, here we have the lead screw, which is a... Looks like 1.5 millimeter per, per turn. Very chunky, very heavy. Yeah, that's... That's pretty nice. That's a good thing to start on. So that what was in the box. So we'll continue to building it. So I'm done building the Y and Z axis parts. Most of them are uh, with these rollers. Um, there is a really good thing about these. These have this hex nut with an off-center bore. Uh, so you can actually make sure that they have proper uh, pressure to the um, profiles that they're working on. like that a lot. Uh, there is something strange about it. I don't know what. Uh, some of these parts came with washers and others didn't. I don't know why. Um, it appears to me that washers would have been a good idea and uh, they wouldn't have been breaking the bank, so I don't know. And what I did find out that the, uh, that the parts that separate the rollers here from the stepper and from the assembly uh, they're a little bit too big and they kind of make sure that the roller is not working correctly and being the idler to the stepper motor to make sure that the belt is uh, far enough separated um, it's not the best choice of parts uh, I used two M3 nuts to take care of that and um, that works a lot better and it's a really simple fix. The rest of the parts are really good um, especially um, these rollers on the, on the profiles they work extremely well. This is this is such such easy movement it is so perfectly aligned it is really fun it's a real good thing. Also, uh, the stepper motors, everything just fix, fits perfectly. Um, whoever made these instructions and, and uh, got all of this prepared, it's a very good manual and it's really, it's really fun to do. So, I'm going to continue. Uh, I wanted to show these parts because um, now I'm going to add belts and other things, so things aren't going to move anymore. It's going to be harder to show the parts, but the build is going really great. So while I was pretty happy with the build so far, 
I've just run into a major issue. I was able to solve it, but it did take some uh, time and um, it required the use of some parts that were not part of the printer. It started with um, with uh, the idler down here, um, the bag B2, which was supposed to contain six uh, M4 T nuts. Well, it didn't contain any, and uh, it continued with the bag B42, which didn't contain any T nuts either. So that was uh, nine T nuts missing. And I solved that problem by just using M4 nuts and uh, wedging them into the profile, which works pretty well, but now they're not centered perfectly and it's going to be kind of a pain to get them um, centered again if I have to remove anything. But uh, that was kind of an annoyance. And that brings us to the next thing that I really... I really have no idea who thought of this. Um, what started as a pretty good idea for the Z-axis mount, um, it is actually a really bad idea because this Z-axis is hanging from the top. As you can see here, there's nothing underneath here. And um, if I just give this a little push, you can actually see that it is moving quite a bit and the reason for that is because for some reason they chose to have one of these uh, vibration absorbers up here and as you can see these are elastic uh, so is the mount up here it is not done in a way that it would absorb the movement of this and make sure that the z-axis doesn't move so this z-axis although it is um, constructed really solid um, is very prone to vibrating which I have no idea why they did that it would have been so easy to take care of that by just doing a very simple thing and adding a holder with a bearing down here so it would always sit down right at the bottom and and be and be fastened in a way that the z-axis would only move when you wanted to and not have it vibrating freely so although the rest of the 3d printer is absolutely top-notch and super and everything um, that was a really poor design choice I don't know who thought of that I've continued with the build up to the point where it's now time to thread the belt for the x-axis and get the extruder set up and everything. I've already mounted the end stops and everything has gone really well. The instructions are just excellent. Um, now I'm at the point where it's time to put the TiVo Titan extruder in its place and uh, there's a thing that I should mention because it's not part of the instructions and that is there is this little piece of PTFE um, that comes with the extruder this is not for putting into the top part here um, no this piece should go and um, what you need to do is you need to cut like about 28 to 30 millimeters of PTFE and then put this PTFE into the short throat that goes into the assembly for for the pulley mechanism and then you should make sure that this fits in here well and goes down in here and when you're able to fit these two pieces in here like this then everything is well there should be a short piece of PTFE in here just to make sure that the filament won't move inside the throat and um, 
basically that's all you have to do. So cut about 30 or 28 millimeters and make sure that this fits in here um, without blocking or or causing it to um, to not line up correctly. It should be a loose fit but it should be in there. It must be in there because it makes sure that if you have a flexible filament or something like wood or or a, um, a soft ABS, this is going to make sure that this is moved correctly. The other thing that you need to make sure is that once you mount the stepper um, to the extruder, uh, the um, this part here needs to be flush on here, so they need to line up perfectly. So this gear needs to fit the other gear absolutely perfectly. If they don't, um, then make sure to either pull it up or push it down further. Usually the TiVo Titan extruder comes with a uh, slim stepper because it doesn't need that much torque. Um, so one could actually expect that if this stepper has too much torque, it's going to do very bad things to this gear up here. Um, so we should make sure that it's flush because if this is ruined we can just flip it over and continue using it and be careful after that. But uh, um, in my experience uh, these st strong steppers with the geared extruders um, they can wreak havoc and they will. So, but apart from that, everything is really simple, everything is easy to set up, and uh, if it wasn't for that issue with the Z-axis, I would say this is the perfect printer. Well, now I'm kind of done with everything that I have to set up. I've got the whole printer together, uh, everything is working, but the printer itself won't work yet because I still have to change the firmware to support the Titan extruder which needs different settings because the stepper needs to turn in the other direction because it's a geared extruder and the steps per millimeter settings are also off because um, it's a geared extruder and we have to take into account that there's a gear now. I also leveled the build platform. I made sure that everything is in parallel or perpendicular. I did have a few issues putting together the the electronics box uh, because uh, the screws that come with this acrylic are a little bit too long and some of these standoffs are a bit wobbly. It took me a while to shorten those screws. This is another example of those 3D printers where the instructions are very good up to the point where you're supposed to wire it up and then it goes almost silent and just gives you a very simple pictogram or picture um, what the end is supposed to look like and it doesn't tell you where to put the wires, where to thread them and all these things. So that is something that I'm really looking for, a 3D printer kit which has good ex a good instruction for getting the electronics all hooked up. Okay now I have to admit I gave up on the z-axis and I'm just going to fix it before I do the review but I want to make sure that you understand what I'm doing here. I've 3D printed this block and at the top of this block there's a bearing and the z-axis rod I machined a five millimeter uh, step into that so it fits the bearing and what I'm now going to do is I'm going to mount this block to the uh, 20 by 40 millimeter profile and the z-axis is going to rest in that and that is going to provide an optimal holding point fixed point for the uh, z-axis 
and that is never going to move again. And I can even keep it in a way that it is slightly springy um, to the top. So if you run over anything while printing, um, you don't really, you don't damage the extruder, but it can lift a little bit. Um, the the uh, vibration reducer from the stepper motor will still do that. Um, I think this is the best solution that you can do because um, the z-axis was just all over the place. I think this is going to improve the printer quite a lot. All right now if you don't have a lathe and, and you can't make a part like this um, there's don't worry uh, you can just make a block like this um, make the top hole a little bit smaller and just drop a single ball from a ball bearing that is between three and five millimeters in there um, because the top of this rod is actually machined very good so if you have a single ball just holding that up um, it'll work just as good so this is it this is the new z-axis holder um, you can see the block that I printed down here it is fastened by two screws there are t-nuts going into the profile it all lines up very nicely now the threaded rod uh, sits down in the bearing and moves very nicely uh, there is still some springiness left, uh, so if you run into anything, um, the z-axis can still move upward for about, I don't know, a millimeter or so. But it is firmly sitting down onto the bearing, uh, which is very good. Um, there's no movement in there, and if I set the table to zero now, it's going to stay there. That was the problem that I was having. It was just moving all over the place, and everything that I printed looked good from the x and y axis but everything else just looked awful okay so i'm done building the printer and uh, now that i'm done with it there are some things that appear odd starting for example with the placement of this stepper over here why is this stepper on the right side the electronics box is on the left and it necessitates threading the cable rather awkwardly over to the other side. They could have just taken the stepper and put it on the left side. I don't understand it. Same thing was true with the z-axis. The idea was pretty good, but I don't know, maybe they ran out of time doing it, constructing it. It's, it's really odd. This thing is so good and I think it'll work really, really well, but some things are just out of place. I don't know why they did that. I'm going to put it to the test now. I'm pretty sure I have it set up correctly. I'm really happy with the way that it looks now, the way that it works now. Um, now it just has to work. And we'll see how good it does at that. I was able to get a few prints done. I think uh, the setup is quite well. I may still have to do some dialing in regarding retraction and restart and things like that. Uh, but all the other values appear to be okay. If we take a look at these prints, um, it is actually there really really nice they're absolutely beautiful the surfaces are just so great also um, I took the measurements of this shell part and I had a look at, at how it came out and the only thing that I'm a bit worried about is that the z-axis is a bit slow but I can fix that in the firmware and I can fix that um, in the files for the slicer, but I think it's the firmware. And I did my usual block uh, where I do overhangs and pockets and things like that. And you can see that the surfaces once again are 
extremely good. Uh, the whole feel of it is very good, but these overhangs are not perfect. So I need to figure out what's happening there. There are some uh, issues with the joining of the material. Um, this is made in a way so it is always two layers and uh, these apparently didn't join up correctly so this doesn't look as good as it should but I think that is fixable in software. The only issue that remains is an issue that I've seen um, when the printer starts up and when you're homing the axis there appears to be some issue in the firmware or in a setting that I didn't that I didn't redo uh, that makes the z-axis go down after homing for about half a millimeter or so so I want to find out what the issue is and how to get rid of it uh, but but apart from that the uh, the Titan extruder is working extremely well it has a lot of pressure and it has a very good print quality it is also really fast and um, I'm quite happy with it. I really am. So uh, this was the build of the Tarantula. Um, it did take a lot longer than I expected. I had to do some changes to the printer that I wasn't expecting when I thought it was just a kit printer, just put it together and it's gonna be fine. No. Um, I did have to do some changes. Uh, some things didn't work out. But looking on in the internet it appears that I'm not alone with this observation. Yeah, but in the end it turned out to be a really, really great printer. So let's see if we can build on that. Thank you for watching and bye bye.